Allow me to remind you that an epidemic of unknown origin has already eradicated a few genuinely distinctive towns in the northern part of the country. The cause and circumstances of these tragic events remain uncertain. There is a lot that we cannot explain yet. It appears as though the plague has a mind of its own, as if it is driven by some irrepressible will. Why else has no one managed to fight it successfully? Why does it target the most precious aspects of our existence? The sand plague picks its victims fastidiously, and the same principle always draws it back to whoever tries to oppose it. Surprisingly, we've yet to hear a single word from the powers that be. So, it's all about trickery to you? Wherever have you come from? No, no. I detest trickery. But if we ourselves are to suffer deception, our hands are no longer tied. Where are we? Well, the muscular contraction is there. Means you're already inside of him. This must be one of the ventricles right here. What a silly place. It's stuff. So it's not real for now? I don't think it has started yet. Does it matter what it's made of? It's definitely struggling. We need to perform Sectio Transversalis. Cut the wall. There's no other way out. What else is there to do? I know what to do. Those who favor hard logic and direct action are bound to be misguided. Only a miracle can set us free without us having to destroy something. And I can do miracles. Just let me. Will you please be quiet? You're a liar and a thief. Who is going to believe you when you keep lying to yourself? The truth is my shepherd. Whatever happens, I will find answers. And justice will be restored. I will perform the operation. Medica Morbo Akive. Don't you go all bossy on me, clever clogs. You will act justly, but your justice will blind you and become his demise. This calls for the gentle hand of a surgeon. Step aside, both of you. Your gentle hands are used to killing, not giving life. You will inevitably do harm. As for Brainy, he has no regard for casualties at all. Neither of you knows compassion. Yes, it seems unlikely that we'll get along well, but there's only one truth. Any choice is right as long as it's willed. That's the truth of the matter. Only the heart will show you the right choice. Stop thinking about yourselves. Think of the sick. He's in pain. I can't see it yet, but I can feel it. It's not even a trap. It's a grave. Subipsum fumis sumus. Can't say I hold a soft spot for it. I can see that. You're full of hate. Stuffed or not, it's breathing. I can hear it. It can be healed rather than killed. You mean you won't become a killer? But you will. Mark my word, that's exactly what will happen. But I can avoid it. No. We won't ever get along. 
I suggest we be on our way. The sooner the better. Off we go then? Let's go. The clock is ticking. Hello, hello, and welcome back to my playthrough of Pathologic. Last time we completed the Bachelor campaign, and today we are continuing with the horror specs. Before I walk through the store and choose our character, I would like to remind uh, previous viewers that, as we remember, the horror specs was a somewhat mysterious outlaw who had created the panacea. Today, we will see his own side of the story. High respects. How do they call upon the Menku, the faithful of a warden kin, known by their hands for they are butchers, known by their eyes for they are surgeons, they who follow the lines, they who are the leader of the kin, they who speak to a dirgs, they who know the secret art of haruspecy. What is a haruspex? Reading the future in the entrails, he knows that a body bears semblance to the universe. The scalpel follows the lines of the body, his steps follow the lines of his kin's fortune. A haruspex that can tell a true line from a false one is entrusted with power. A haruspex who is confused by his path gets buried into the deep black flesh of the earth. This is the story of a person who has avoided the contradiction, eager to rip a doomed life apart, masterfully fulfilling his true purpose in the process. Achimi Burak is coming back to his hometown after an absence of ten years. Born to a family endowed with a caste right to cut living beings open, he was preparing himself for this line of work since childhood. Atemi's father, Isidor Burak, a wise man and philosopher well respected by the locals, had admitted to the limits of traditional knowledge and sent his son off to study modern medicine in the academy. Atemi has been traveling from town to town, learning theoretical and practical surgery for several years now. Suddenly, a mysterious letter appears with his father giving him notice of his impending demise and begging Artemi to return and accept succession. Unwilling to wait for a regular freight train, Artemi follows the rails through the step until he's caught up with by a small shunt locomotive. This is how young Harispex arrives in the town. Answers one question. No wonder people think he's a killer. He was jumped on his first day coming into the town. <sighs> From this point forward, I am the eldest member of the Burak family, a Menku. I am the heir to my father, Hisudu Burak, a warden of the kin, the supreme Menku of many years. 
The inheritance of my father will nourish my mind and my body alike. It is a question of life and death for me to claim it, for it will imbue my dissolute existence with reason. I am one of the Menku, those who know the lines, those who open up the body, those who link the earthly to the underearth. The duty of the Menku is to serve the children of Budo, to interpret coincidence, to point out decisions informed by wisdom. The very reason of my existence is to carry out this duty. Who will I become if I will fail to bind my destiny with my father's calling? In which the Harusvex turns from a rightful heir into a dangerous criminal. So, already on display, this is the Harusvex's big mechanic. He can cut open a body and take the fresh organs out of it. And well, they're useful. So my strategy usually is that the heart is the most valuable. Okay, well, these items take up slots down here. And you do have limited inventory, so I take the stuff that is the most valuable. And I think those are the kidney, heart, and blood. Blood has a secondary use, heart is very strong as a trade item, and kidney... Hmm. I'll carry it around just in case. Yeah, I choose not to take livers. And as always, two executors watch over me. So Barak, you're almost dead. Got a few more minutes left to live. I'm here to solemnly announce that. Are you with that crowd? No, of course not. They were but peaceful townspeople, craftsmen, factory workers, kind sons and good fathers. I'm far more dangerous. I'm the mask of fate. Some peaceful townspeople? Why did they try to kill me? My friend will explain that. So what did you want to tell me? You've been hit on the head several times, and the locals have heavy fists. Not sure you've noticed already, but you've got four stab wounds. One of them seemingly rather grievous. Massive blood loss, too. The local climate doesn't allow for too much strain. Any heart conditions? Some. My heart is a bit too soft. Well, your health is in a sorry state. Am I wrong to suspect you haven't eaten for a couple of days and had no sleep last night? Your expression betrays you. Your hunger and exhaustion are also critical. I wonder which one of these unfortunate afflictions will become the end of you first. So, what's your plan? What would you recommend? I'll need a first aid kit to restore your health, or at least some bandages or tourniquets that stop the bleeding. Painkillers would make you, would help you make it even further. Where do I get them? You can mug the passers by or barter with them. Children will gladly trade most valuable things in exchange for what others consider junk. Moreover, our drunkards usually have bandages on them. When you're a drunk, it makes sense to always be prepared for a fight. When they're hungover, however, they'd sell their own sister for a bottle of water. Water is scarce here. Is that enough to make it to the evening? You're also hungry, aren't you? Very hungry. You don't have to mug people to say you're hunger. Food can be found in shops. Although your rep reputation would preclude you from enjoying their hospitality. On the other hand, a whole warehouse of meat was robbed yesterday when it was unlocked for shipping procedures. How do I find it? It's still unlocked and unguarded. You won't miss it. The warehouses are within a stone's throw from here. They also serve as a lovely shelter for the at-odd with the law crowd, by the way. You've got that in common, so they'll likely welcome you. Will you make it to the warehouses? To be honest, I'm dreadfully tired. If any of the noble townspeople trust you enough, you can always sleep at their place. Just remember that you're an outlaw for now. The only person who believes you is Vlad Olmimsky. I'll show you where he lives. You can get some sleep at his mansion.
Don't forget to apply bandages before that. Unless dying in your sleep is the career opportunity of your choice, that is. I'm an outlaw? Be careful. Dodge strangers. They're afraid of you now and will attack you in a heartbeat. Don't trust anyone. Speak to my fellow Exeter. He wanted to have a word with you too. Okay. This is the Lump, Olgimsky's Manor. It's the home of Big Vlad, who my father talked about in his letter. At least it was ten years ago. Beak. Welcome to your hometown, Warden. It's been a long time since you've been here. Probably don't even remember the spicy odor of fire in the air. Yeah. Do you know why you were attacked? No. You've been mistaken for another person. They're looking for a murderer. A very important and well-respected man was killed last night. The townsfolk love the deceased more fervently than some children love their fathers. Don't be too hard on them for their outburst. Should I also feel sorry for them? Apologize, perhaps? They are naive. In towns like this, reputation is everything. Books are judged by their own covers here. Even after the last page is turned, no one is going to examine you in detail. A minor rumor here, a gossip there, and you're a public enemy already. You've got zero reputation. The only option available to you is living with the consequence of this. Well, what should I do? Restore your reputation. Do that now, and at any other time it becomes too low. People are foolish and weak. One day you're beaten to a pulp and laughed at. The next, you're worshipped. And for the third day, well, I think you've caught my drift. What I'm saying is, any misdeed can be atoned for, and you'll be loved just as fervently as you are hated. How do I restore my reputation? Do good deeds, the town is small. Rumors spread like fire, growing hundredsfold in the process. They're spread by children too, so your reputation will be restored. Just don't be wasteful with it, it's fragile. What makes it low? The decrease of your reputation depends first and foremost on the number of living beings you've made less than living. It also depends on how you influence the people whose fates are bound to yours. You'll meet those special people. They're called the bound sometimes. A silly custom, but a useful one. Special people. Thirty or so. Each of them possessing their own unique traits. All of them hate one another. All of them are habitual liars. All of them deserve to live. And some of them are inca incompatible. Someone has to die so that another may live. You know what that means. How will I recognize these people? That's not hard. They're striking personalities, locally famous, even though not all of them were of noble descent. Beggars, outcasts, little children even. Bound to be a little bit closer to perfection than the common crowd. You see, thank you for the advice. Hmm. What else do I have in my inventory? Knife. Protection gloves. The basic med supply. Actually, let's use these. And kerosene. The crowd is gathered over here, apparently. I genuinely have no idea what's going on with the visual glitches, but I'm enjoying them. By the way, has that 
awkward cutscene showed. Yeah, we're being hunted. Everybody hates our face now. Hello, child. Murder. Murder, they say. Damn, no one can kill silent time. No way. A new face in our small in our small society. A fighter? A doctor. A doctor? Jeez, we've got a doctor already. Quite unexpectedly too. You haven't had one like me. Something's wrong with my head. You're not one of grief's men, are you? Who's this grief? Bad grief is the kingpin of the criminal world. He has a lair in the northern warehouses where he trades in weapons, twirin, and other nastiness. Every murderer and criminal has a connection to him one way or another. That's the way it goes around here. And that's why I'm asking you again. Were you on your way to him or not? Do I look like a criminal to you? Hmm. Some people came through the warehouses a few minutes ago. They told everyone that a horrible killer, a whole town's apparently out to get him, had tried to escape by train, got ambushed, killed everyone, and was now going back here. So now I'm thinking, were they perhaps talking about you? It's a misunderstanding. Came from far away and got attacked. Okay then, you do look like you've been through a lot. We'd like to help you, but we've been robbed too. And it's bad luck would have it, it's the medicine that's been snatched. Like uh, that bastard, he's a traitor, a thief, a thug, and a prick. Who are you talking about? Lika, the name f the name fits the pricks a natural born bootlicker. I can't even figure out who he's sold out to. The thieves or the dogheads. He's stolen the most precious thing from us, from his mates, the bastard. And on top of that, he's done it right when a war's about to start. A war. A war with the dogheads, that stinking bastard, that heartless, soulless little rat. Stole the most precious thing we owned. Murdered a friend and ran over to the enemy's side. He used to think he was one of us. Was he pretending all along? He deserves to die, to be killed. What precious thing. A very important medicine, a schmouter. They're very rare since they're handmade. The recipe is unknown. There are different ones. Some will cure you, others will kill you. We had the last one to use as a sample to learn to tell which ones by their taste. They all look the same. What does it cure? There used to be a horrible disease here. Came from nowhere, disappeared later. Give me the creeps when I remembered it. It was horrible, spreading like wildfire. It's a miracle we stopped it. Well, we kept the schmouter afterwards because we remembered what it was like, and he stole it, leaving us to die, that stinking prick. So where's this guy now? He's probably with his thieving buddies. At first he hid in the step, and then he just vanished. Probably took a roundabout to evade us. We lost him near the barrow, then we had to run away because the thieves appeared all of a sudden. If you find this bastard, do cut him up into pieces, please. I mean, kill him. Yes, the bastard doesn't deserve to live any longer. I'll give you my revolver as a gift then. One thing though, if he's with a dog, don't touch it. One must never hurt dogs. Alright, I'll have a chat with him if I find him. Lonis Notkin is claiming that some doghead is hiding here. Rumor has it that he's a traitor and a thief. In trouble to be troubled is to have your trouble doubled. Like I promised last playthrough, I'm going to be um, reading the character text. Next episode, actually. On day two, because it kind of break the pacing here. And uh, we're already being chased, so uh, we reset the world for an optimal uh, setup. So now we gotta sneak out from over here and go talk to Bad Grief. See his side of uh, Notkin's claims. But yeah, this start is nasty. People hurt like hell, and they are constantly gunning out after you. 
mixed with the slow walk speed and awkward way to escape people, along with guards' uh, faster-than-usual walk speed. It's hard not to die as the start of the horror specs, and people accidentally choose this guy and then they quit the game because it's hard. The city boy grabbed too much power for his own good. This ain't going to end well. You look like a man not to be picked on, don't you? <laughs> we'll do some rooking and swindling here and there, we will, but let's not be enemies. Thieving is more honorable than killing anyway, if you ask me. You must hold a different opinion, though, eh? Who are you? <laughs> Ain't they been telling you about good old bad grief? The kingpin and the king of thieves? The stockman in chief? The smuggling master? Well, the rob rings are there, too. So that's how it is. Well, that's me. Welcome to our lair. We're up to some smuggling we are, so everything that's prohibited you can find here in great supply. You'd be careful, though, big man. Buying stuff off of us harms you in a way. If anyone finds out, they won't trust you anymore. That doesn't matter in my case. What? You know, I... You, I know who you are. It's not like I have a choice. A line of trade like this, man doesn't have no right to miss out on something, anything fundamental. Some turmoil that was, eh? Those who got away from you ran past us, you see. Asked me if you were one of our lot. Nope, I said. So they warned me you'd come. They'll warn those who greet them at their next pit stop, too. A damn mess, they mistook me for someone else. Oh, don't you fuss. You got yourself into the town from the right side. Scum and villains here, villains and scum. Shady folk living by the warehouses since the world began. Us lot, we're used to them murderings, robberings, muggerings, killings, and the likes. Sir Gang is not the only one here. Bah! If only one heart bomb there is, one and only is where the strongest. Officially, we ain't no thieves, but rather humble storekeepers. There is new blood, too. Someone's hired them doggies to guard their stuff. In no way they ain't got no sticky fingers. Well, that's their business, not mine. But the boys, them little punks, those are on the rise. How can a man have guessed? What boys are you talking about? Some whippersnapper used to play around here. We didn't touch the law, why would we? There's small fish, tiny fish, a cuff on the nape and a kick in the butt to shoo them away. From here we're enough. They went on ganging, got themselves a real fighting unit and real dogs. Snappish too. Getting on our nerves quite a bit. I was patient with them for a while. But now they're trying to get their hands on my goods. That I won't stand for. Not for a moment, no. They're going to declare war on them. I'll start with one of them, the cockiest one. Take care of him first. They had this traitor of theirs ratting him out on us. The little punk was afraid for his life. But now the pricks turned on everyone, both them law and us. Poisoned one of my thieves, took the stash and ran off into the step, that son of a bitch. We went looking for him, couldn't find him in the dark. And so, would you help us with them, eh? If you meet him somehow, could you just end him? We'll do you good back, do you favors and the like. Where'd you lose him? Look, I'll show you where he went. He must have slipped away further, to the abattoir. Okay, I'll look for him if I pass the area by. Same kid. Grief says that the murderous whelp could be hiding somewhere around here. Well. Besides, uh, Vlad. Oh, shit. Besides Vlad, this is our only real lead to go down. So let's just see what this kid is up to. May as well see all sides of the story. Although I'm seeing parallels with this kid and me, at least claims wise. Killed some people, ran away. I defended myself and ran away. You know, tomato, tomato, the usual standings. So let's just go take a look. Say hi, maybe scare him off or something. 
Or if they're a natural born thug, we may put its head on a pike. Till then, we must slowly walk through the step to reach him. And wash the blood off our, off our hands, of course, in the river. While we're making this trek, as you've noticed, this character starts off hurt, hungry, thirsty. Oh no, wait, thirst wasn't added until 2. But his reputation's crap, he's starving, he's tired, and everyone's gunning to beat him to death. Which is fun. And then we're forced into the step to chase after some person. Maybe even a dangerous person. Oh. Oh. It's a kid. Who are you? What's your business here? Gathering tire, are you? I came here for you, little doggy. Oh, really? You're in cahoots with them, too? No way. So who sent you? Someone who's very unhappy with you. They want your blood. Are they nuts? Or are they bullying me? So I did some snooping here and there. So what? So I did do some double agent in. Ugh, I'm done. I don't want to rat out... Don't want to rat out the soul and a halves to the thieves. Don't want to rat out the thieves to the soul and a halves. I'm the only sensible person around here. Why do they want you dead? This is your last chance. I don't like traitors. Hey, that's nothing. Nothing at all. So I took something. It's common property, right? So it's mine, too. They'd have... Slang wanged over the schmouter anyways. <laughs> you could say I did them a favor, and so I hurt a doggy. True, but in self-defense, nothing more. One's right to defend himself is sacred, right? Yes, can't argue with you here. Have mercy on me, good man. He who saves a life will be rewarded. I just can't tell you what they want me dead for. It would make me feel real bad. I won't do it anymore. He, it's just a kid. All right, get out of here, kid. Am I doing that? Our reputation increases. Listen, he's in a similar situation as me. It's just a dumb kid. Now, if he was one of the mugger NPCs, I'd gladly slash his throat, but he still has time to grow. So we'll wait for that judgment in the next, uh, I don't know, seven years. Unfortunately, by not killing him, we have suppose, well, we didn't follow through with our promise to these two people and we have to return to them. Not only that, but we let them run away with a schmouter, an incredibly important medicine item, if you remember from The Bachelor. I have made a sacrifice here, sacrificed a lot of rewards to fix my reputation a little by, you know, not massacring a kid, and fuck. To try and yeah, use these to spin them around. Just keep diagonal walking to the finish line. There. That big seated doctor is no wimp. A dangerous type. Couldn't imagine we'd find such a rat among us on the eve of war. I've met your traitor. So what do you think of him? Er, rather low down. Exactly. So what'd you do to him? I let him go. Pah! What kind of a ripper does that? Did you get the idea that I'm a ripper? Well, never mind then. Perhaps you did the right thing. I feel better now. I was so angry I couldn't breathe. You are right not to kill him. Did you at least get a, give him a good thrashing, though? He told me not to hurt dogs. He partially fit the description. 
We get nothing for it, but our reputation receives another boost. Fucking hell. Yeah. So another thing that sucks is that these people chasing me, as far as they know, they're doing the right thing. Beating up a local criminal who's murdered a couple of people. So attacking them just kind of affirms people's suspicions about you. So you can't defend yourself and not lose reputation. The best thing you can do is run away and prove your name like that. Hurt nobody and just build your reputation. Build up the word of your good deeds and maybe people will respect you again. Where there's carrion, there are crows. Did I get to the where? No, I already saw that. So, I am unwelcome here. How do I explain that I had nothing to do with it? Hey, old boy. You stirred the town you have. Heavens know how many folks you've offed, they say. <laughs> but M block kids weren't after you in the first place. So only you have to drop a word or two, and they'll go round believing it all. Got themselves a new target already. After some bitch now. A shapeshifter dire and grim. So everything that's wrong is her doing now, and the wrongs you've done for real. I'm still a target, ain't I? They'll leave you alone soon, they will. Our lot says they're just one of them folks from the station that ain't dead yet. Just one guy to describe your features. I'll die soon enough, too. Crawled to the cemetery already. There he lies now, all a bleeding. Ain't you a tough guy? If you were to die, there'd be no one left to call you murderer. That I can tell you for sure. Where is the cemetery? <laughs> All around us a cemetery is. Go wherever you will. <laughs> Alright, I'll show you. There's a lodge there, a keeper's lodge. Ask for a blessed girl, the daughter of the caretaker. May he rest in peace. She'll tell you the who's and where's. A kind soul she is. Thank you. I'll, consi I'll consider it. City boy grabbed too much power for his own good. This ain't gonna end well. What's the news in town? There's a lot of things going on, left and right, there are. Got this feeling we're gonna have a heavy day today. Lots of stuff happening. Depending on what you're looking for, what's your deal? I'm looking for trouble. Oh, there. I've got word there's an ambush at the station again. We ain't got no common folks this time. There's some stronger meat there. Brigands and thugs. Armed, by the way. Wanna meet him? May end good for ya. May put you six feet under. Really? That's interesting. And how long will they be there? I don't know. I didn't send them there. Tried to talk them out of it, even. So it ain't my trouble if they come around complaining and catch my drift. Not you, a weasel, Grief. I have found the runt. And I let him go. That ain't good. Got too soft in the heart or something. Soft, eh? Well, can't blame ya. Got too hard of a bone structure. You watch it, I'll break them in no time. And once again, that's even more reputation. Went from near nothing to half a bar. And now, men are not trying to kill me in the streets. Already it took just one good deed and two people to spread the word, and now we're in... only moderately dire straits. However... There's some men down at the station. Let us go say hi to them. See what's going on. And also quick save because I've been doing this for a while. Nice. There's some people around here. Oh, they're angry. Oh, there's a mugger. Mm. 
Yeah, so you kill and then take all their fucking organs out mid-combat. That's, uh, that's just how you do it as a Harvest Specs. Another two guys. One's a mugger, another's a factory worker. Fortunately, our knife is sharp enough to kill them in one hit, which is pretty good. That is a shotgun. Yoink. Who needs a, who needs a pistol if you have a shotgun and tons of ammo? Oh, we're doing good now. And people liked it that I killed the muggers. Phew. Unfortunately, I had to end like that, but, uh... I'm not complaining right now.